So if you're creating any kind of parkour game, wall control is extremely important and adds a lot of variety to your gameplay. In the last tutorial, I already showed you how to add wall running. And today, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about climbing and climb jumping. As a base, I'm going to use my first person movement script, but feel free to use your own if you want to. And if you have a third person controller, no worries, the code should work just fine. In the end, you're going to have a great climbing ability that can easily be combined with wall running. And by the way, you can also vault over objects, which is quite cool. So yeah, let's get started. Open up a new script, call it whatever you want, and first we're going to define some variables. You're going to need a reference for the orientation, which is just an empty game object that stores where the player is looking, the rigid body and the layer mask to define what is wall. Now you also want floats for the climb speed, max climb time and climb timer, as well as a bool to check if you're currently climbing. For the wall detection, you're going to need floats for the detection length, the sphere cast radius, the max wall look angle, and the current wall look angle. Also a raycast hit variable to store the information of the front wall hit and a bool to check if there's a wall in front of you. Okay, and now let's actually implement this wall detection. For this, we're going to use a sphere cast, which is exactly the same as a ray cast, but instead of checking with an invisible line, it's kind of like a cylinder. So you can just use physics.spherecast and then pass in the starting position, radius, direction, where the information is going to be stored, length of the sphere cast, and layer mask. And now for the wall look angle, we're going to code it in a way that if the max climb look angle is for example 30, you need to look at the wall in this area in order to start climbing. If you look at the wall in an angle of something like 45 degrees, it's not going to work. And this is really important, because if you don't implement this, you would be able to wall run and climb at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. Okay, now just call this function in void update and you're ready to code the climbing movement. For this, create three new functions for starting a climb, climbing and stopping a climb. In start climbing, just set the climbing bool to true and in stop climbing, set it to false again. Now for the climbing movement, the easiest way of coding this is to just set the y velocity of the player's rigid body to your climb speed while leaving the x and z velocities as they are. Now usually when you code player movement, you want to use rigidbody.addForce because it's a lot smoother, but for climbing, directly setting the velocity works just fine. Okay, and that's it. I know these functions look extremely simple, but you can add more functionality to them if you want to. For example, you could change the camera FOV when you start climbing, then play a sound while you're climbing, and then a particle effect when the timer ran out and you can no longer climb. So this is generally a very clean way of structuring your code. Now of course you need to call these functions somewhere. So create a state machine and here we're going to define when to start or stop climbing. So to enter the climbing state, there needs to be a wall in front of the player, you need to be pressing the forward key and as explained, the wall look angle needs to be below the max wall look angle. Now if you're not climbing and you still have climb time left, call the start climbing function. And to implement the timer, just count it down when it's above zero and stop climbing when it's below zero. And if you're not in the climbing state, you want to stop any active climbs. Now you might have noticed that the climb timer never gets a reset. So for this, go to your player movement script and make sure that the grounded bool is set to public. Now you can reference this player movement script from your climbing script and then inside of the wall check function, just reset the climb timer if you're grounded. Also, don't forget to call the state machine and climbing movement function in void update. Okay, and that's it for the climbing part. Head over to Unity and set the variables to something like this. Also, make sure to have a layer mask called what is wall and assign it to all of your walls.
If you now hit play and walk up to a wall, you can climb up, at least for a certain amount of time. Also, you should be able to climb onto and over objects. If that's not the case, change your climbing speed and sphere cast radius until it works. Now the only problem that's left is that currently you can move left and right really fast while climbing. If you like that, then just leave it as it is, but I'm quickly going to show you how to change it. Open up your player movement script, create a float for the climb speed, define a new state called climbing and also create a bool with the same name. And now inside of the state machine, create a new state for climbing. And in there, just set the state to climbing and then the desired move speed to your climb speed. And in your climbing script, make sure to activate the climbing bool of the player movement script just as you did with the private climbing bool. So back in Unity, you can set the climb speed to a lower value and now you can move left or right, but only slightly, which is definitely more realistic. Okay, now let's go back to the script and code the climb jump. For this, you're first going to need a few more variables. So create floats for the climb jump up and climb jump back force. Then a key code for the jump key, I'm going to use space and also create two integers for the climb jumps and climb jumps left. Next, create a transform for the last wall, a vector free for the last wall normal and a float for the minimum amount that a wall normal needs to change. Now you can create a new function called climb jump. In there, calculate the force that you want to apply by multiplying the up direction with the upwards jump force and the direction away from the wall with the backwards jump force. Then you simply add this force by using rigidbody.addForce and forcemode.impulse. Also, before you add the force, it's usually a good idea to reset the rigid body's y velocity to zero. And don't forget to count down the climb jumps after you jump. Now in the state machine, you want to call this climb jump function. If there's a wall in the front, you're pressing the jump key and you still have climb jumps left. Now the next thing we need to code is checking whether or not we hit a new wall. Because in that case, we want to reset our climb jumps. So first, make sure that you store the transform of the current wall and also the normal of it. Also, if you didn't know, the normal in this case is just a direction pointing away from the wall. So back in the wall check function, let's create a bool called new wall. Now, when did you hit a new wall? There's basically two cases. Either when the wall you hit has a completely different transform from the last one, or if the normal of the wall has changed. And here we just compare the angle between the current wall normal and the last one. Okay, and now if there's a wall in front and you hit a new wall, or if you're grounded, you want to reset the climb timer and climb jumps left. Now you can head back to Unity and set the variables to something like this. And if you hit play, you can now perform climb jumps. There's just one problem. If you hold the forward key while jumping, you're kind of countering the jump backward force. To fix that, you can open your script again and create a bool called exiting wall, as well as floats for the exit wall time and exit wall timer. Now in the state machine, you can make an entirely new state that gets activated when exiting wall is true. And in there, you first want to stop any active climbs and also implement the exit wall timer, similar to how we implemented the climb timer. And whenever you jump, just set exiting wall to true and start the timer. And don't forget to make sure that you can't climb while exiting a wall. And now in your player movement script, get a reference to your climbing script and then you want to stop the entire move player function while you're exiting a wall. That means while exiting a wall, pressing the forward key has no effect. Back in Unity, assign the climbing script to your player movement script, set the exit wall time to something like this and hit play. And there you go, you have successfully coded a climbing ability that smoothly works together with wall running. Now, there's still one more thing that would be really cool to add, which is ledge grabbing and precise jumping. 
That would be awesome, but you know, I haven't coded it yet, but I'll make sure to finish the tutorial in one or two weeks. I hope you're looking forward to that. And as always, remember that you can download the entire project file over my Discord server. But now, thank you so much for watching. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like in return. And don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss out on further awesome tutorials. See you next time.